Buying a big bike can be intimidating. Coming from something smaller, it can be a sizable jump in terms of performance, ease of use and price. But there are a few motorcycles that make that leap a lot less daunting and one such example is Kawasaki's middleweight naked, the Z650. On this new iteration, Kawasaki has made some changes that not only differentiate but set it apart from its predecessor. The first, unsurprisingly, is to the engine that is now BS6 and Euro 5 compliant. The second and more notably is to the design. Kawasaki has stripped away the few curves of the older model, sharpened up the lines around the tank and the headlight and given it a new paint scheme. What this has done is give the bike a much more dynamic and provocative design, something the Japanese manufacturer refers to as Sugomi. There is some functionality amongst this new form too. The new LED headlight not only looks great, but also does a pretty good job at illuminating what's in front of you. Then there's the addition of a TF3 instrument cluster. It is a rather compact unit, but one of the most crisp ones we've seen at this price point, albeit from the rider's point of view, because it can look quite pixelated up close. This unit can also be connected to Kawasaki's Rideology app. The Z650 misses out on phone notifications or navigation and connecting to the app only allows for you to look at ride statistics on your phone. Once you get past the cosmetic changes, you'll find that the Z650 is largely the same as before. At its center is this, a 649cc liquid-cooled parallel twin engine that in this BS6 avatar makes exactly the same peak power as before. Peak torque though is down by 1.7 Nm, but that's not something you'll notice. And not that you will complain either, because the Z650 is properly quick. And if you are eager with the throttle, the front end will lift up easily in first gear. Push all the way through the 6-speed gearbox and you will blast past 100 km per hour in sports car timing while on your way to some serious triple digit speeds. Complementing that performance is a more guttural exhaust note. Kawasaki has tweaked the intake and exhaust to comply with the latest emission norms and these changes seem to have had an effect on the way the Z650 sounds. At lower revs, it's loud and bassy, but this is an engine that likes to rev. And with this BS6 update, we found that the bike emits a slightly more raspy, throaty note and that added some much needed aggression to this experience. Now this is undoubtedly an engine that's happiest higher up in the rev band, but it's also quite tractable at slow speeds. You can carry a gear higher and a fairly light clutch means you can avoid an unwarranted forearm workout when you're stuck in traffic. Something else you'll be happy about is the ergonomics. You're sat upright, the seat is low and the handlebar is flat and wide. Now I'm 6 feet tall and this bike fits me just right when I'm sitting up. But tuck in and it gets a bit cramped. This is because the handlebar is quite close to you and this tends to bring your elbows in contact with your knees. Alright, so this is a bike that you can live with in the city. But where the Z650 really thrives though is in the twisties. An impressive mid-range makes it superb fun for darting from corner to corner and it could have been even better with nicer tyres. The new Dunlop Sportmax Road Sport 2s proved okay in the dry but they do get fairly squirmy in the wet. There are a couple more aspects where we'd like to see some improvement. First is with the brakes. Stopping power is decent but we found that the ABS sometimes intervenes rather prematurely and quite aggressively. Second, there's the ground clearance. At 130mm, the Z650 bottoms out over most sharply angled speed breakers even without the weight of a pillion. And there you have it, the new Kawasaki Z650. It looks good, it's easy to ride in the city and it's proper fun out in the twisties. At just under rupees 6 lakhs, it's also the only proper Japanese middleweight street naked in our country. Now given our riding conditions, I also think this is one of the easiest first big bikes to step up to. There's enough performance on offer, it's easy to live with and it's fairly affordable.